All right, so as you can see, I got my telescope in. That's my 12 inch Apertura uh, Dobsonian telescope. It's my first Dobsonian telescope, so I'm pretty excited to uh, unbox this and show you guys what I got and to show myself what I got. So anyway, let's get this feather mucker open. I should probably move you closer. So inside here, looks like it's the base. Okay. Got a bit of a cold right now, so I'm trying to get going with that. So that's the little eyepiece holder. Handle, that's nice. Ooh, a bunch of hardware. Bunch of hardware. Looks like whatever this is. Um, okay, that's gotta be the side panels to the base. Okay, so that looks good. Heck yeah. Alright. Two of these, like I said, I've never had a Dobsonian telescope before, so this is new. I don't know even really how to put it together, so. Okay, that must be the uh, the bearings for the, the base to slide on. Sorry, words are not coming to me. Oh, that is a little foggy still. Mm. Didn't even see in the... Uh, in the little box that this came in, there was some hardware. It just fell out, so I'm glad I saw that. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, it's hard to see, but look at that. Oh, I can't wait. Cannot wait. Oh, that's exciting. All right, let's unpack from over here first. What do we got? Nine millimeter Plossel eyepiece. Uh, 1.25 inch. Oh, nope, that's the uh, laser collimator. And looks like batteries are included. Now, I already have a laser collimator, but you know, can't go wrong with having more than one, right? So, this little baggie we've got Whatever the heck this thing is. Oh, what's that? I apparently don't know my telescope parts that well. Shh, don't tell anyone. And then there's another one. So there's two of these. So the only thing I can think of is it goes on the side of the telescope and this is what it rocks on. That's my assumption at this point in time. Okay, and this is the, uh, I think it's a 50, a 50 millimeter finder scope and it's got the right angle on it. So that'll be nice. Uh, an eight by 50 millimeter. So got, that's what came on this piece of foam. And over here on this end, we've got a battery box. Looks like it holds four AA batteries. And I can only assume that this is for the fans that will be used to cool down the primary mirror of the telescope. So, cool. Also on this side, we've got whatever is in this box. What do we got in this box? There it is. Apertura Superview 30 millimeter wide field, fully multi-coated. Next, we've got this box. Okay. So that is the 35 millimeter extension tube. And then we got this tiny little box. Which contains the smallest little moon filter. Isn't it cute? Look at that. Okay. So, it's not looking like there's anything else in this big box. Don't want to pull the telescope out until I have the base built. So 
I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to look up instructions to see how to put together the base. Maybe I won't. Should I figure it out right now? You can't answer me. You're watching this after the fact. Wow. All right, so that's out of the way. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's see how this goes. That's the front panel. And the two side panels. You got the little Apertura logo on them. Okay. So looking at the instructions, you got this side and you got this side with the tree nuts in it. This is the back side. This is the front side. So let's install the handle. So you use the two medium silver Allen screws to attach the handle to the front plate. The handle was a bit of a tight fit there. Don't tighten both the screws until you have both of them into the tree knots. There. Handle installed. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you, puppies. Say hi to the people. Okay. So, got this. Attach this side to this side. She's being a good girl. Okay, so that part is all built. Got the handle, got the left and right sides attached to the front piece. <clears throat> okay, so we got two of these plates. This one is not the bottom, so that's not the one I need. This one is the bottom. So, the bottom has these tiny little holes. I don't know if you can see it right there. Over here, over here. And then there is the center hole with the brass bushing. So that's the bottom. Okay, so the bottom side of this plate has the brass bushing almost. So this side, not that side. So the bottom of the bottom plate, this brass bushing is almost flush. So I'm gonna attach the feet to those three little holes. These are the feet. These are the little screws. Of course, those aren't Allen screws, so I'm gonna have to bust out my multi-tool and use the little screwdriver on it. All right, the feet are now installed and the mosquitoes are eating my blood, so. I might need uh, some blood donations if anybody wants to donate blood to me. This is the top base plate. See all the extra holes? I'm assuming that's where this is all going to attach. Okay, so we're gonna take the completed base housing, which is this. I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay, so if you look at this, you've got the recessed holes right here. That is the part that you want facing up when you put it on there. Technically, this is the bottom, but we want it facing up so that the, the Allen screws that sit in there are nice and flush when you get them screwed in. Okay, once you got all the holes aligned, I'm gonna use the remaining long black screws. Okay, that's all complete. Um, 
I had one screw right here that kind of went in at a little bit of an angle because it wouldn't line up with the pre-drilled hole that it was screwing into. Um, it was a little tight getting down, but it is all the way down. Um, honestly, not that big of a deal. If you've ever built furniture before, I'm sure you've come across that issue. So that's awesome. Okay, so we're done with this piece. Next thing we want is our bottom base plate with the legs on it, or the feet, not legs. So we want it with the feet down. We're gonna take our little spacer that it came with, put that in the center, like so. Okay, so we're gonna open up this package, which contains two of these, one of which is gonna go right on here. It's got this with the bearings. And then, like I said, it came with two of these. Now we're gonna take this guy, put that on there, and then our second metal sleeve and place that on there. Make sure that sleeve is in the middle. So now we're gonna take the thing I just put together, the base housing, we're gonna flip it around, set it on here. There we go, that's on there. Mm. That's nice. Oh. All right, you can't tell I'm pretty excited. Now we're going to use this little knobby to attach that. So the adjustment bolt comes with a bearing washer on there. We're going to take that off. And we also got a big washer and a small washer. We're going to put small washer, bearing, big washer. So now we're going to use this to attach the two bases together and then this is all one piece. Oh, that sounded cool. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Probably not going to do that with the telescope attached. Okay, enough playing around. is going to be our tension adjustment for azimuth. Yeah, it doesn't spin like that anymore. <laughs> think other than the eyepiece tray that's going to go right here, I think we're just about done putting this guy together. Yep, so now it's the eyepiece tray. It's going to go attach with the lip up. Like so. And this again requires a regular screwdriver, which they do not provide you with. So you need a regular screwdriver to attach the feet to the base and to attach the eyepiece holder. So that is the eyepiece tray attached to the base. Got the tension knob in there and installed. So this is all complete. So, we got that done. I have to say this is much lighter than it looks. Um, yeah, this really isn't that bad. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. Woo. Oh, nice shiny telescope. Oh man, that is lovely. Very, very lovely. All right, so there's two screws on each side. Those are gonna come out. And these little doohickeys that I assumed were the parts that go on the side. I was right. Obviously we got two, one for each side. Really don't know if it's going to be clear tonight. It was clear and now it's getting cloudy again. The moon's right there. I'm going to get a view of the moon as soon as this is all set up.
All right, so both of those uh, side bearings are attached. Okay, so these bearings might end up needing adjustment um, once I start attaching the finder scope and eyepiece, uh, whatever else I attach to it. So, I don't know, maybe I should, you know, I could adjust it later. Okay, so the instructions have an initial setup uh, position for these side bearings and I don't have them in the right spot, so I'm gonna move those and adjust those into the right spot. All right, so I adjusted the bearings on the telescope. Now it's time to put it onto the base. Got a tight fit over here. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm glad I installed those right because there's a round side and a flat side. I wasn't even paying attention. I just grabbed them and installed them. Glad I got those on the right way. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what's wrong. This side isn't the right way, so I gotta fix this one. I screwed up. Okay, fixed my mistake. Now we're gonna put it on the base. There it is, in all its glory. Look at that. That's nice. Hello. Hello! Hello! So yeah, that's pretty. Look at that. Look at you. You can see you. No. Okay. That's nice. Got the uh, soft focus. Got the not so soft focus. And it's got locks so that you can lock your focus if you want. So, here, let me get you a little closer. <laughs> so as you can see here, that's a little cover for the eyepiece. Looks like if we unscrew or loosen those uh, knobs, we can take that out. Now we got a hole for a two inch eyepiece. Put this in, now we got one and a quarter inch eyepiece. So I'm going to, before I grab an eyepiece, I'm gonna make sure it's collimated. I mean, it did just get here through UPS. Okay, got the batteries installed. Yep, so the laser pointer is working. Oh, look at the moon back there, that's cool. But as you can see, it looks like it's pretty well collimated. So that's impressive. I was not expecting it to be collimated after being shipped. It might be off just a little bit, but it's really not that much. I'm going to put on my one and only two inch eyepiece, this 30 millimeter eyepiece that I showed earlier. Okay, so take the dust cap off. And take the caps off of the finder scope. Bye. This is why I like using zoom eyepieces. I wish they made a two inch zoom eyepiece. I'm always dropping things when I'm out here and it's even worse when it's dark out. Let's see, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here. So I got the finder scope mostly lined up with the view and the eyepiece. Um, in the finder scope, the moon is just a little bit below the crosshairs, but it's centered in the eyepiece. So that's pretty good. The moon is currently behind clouds, so I can't make any adjustments at the moment. But uh, in a minute, when the uh, clouds have cleared, I will attach the phone to the eyepiece so that you can get a view of the moon after sitting through me figuring out how to put this together. So stay tuned and I will show you the moon through the 30 millimeter two inch eyepiece. And that'll probably be it for the video. So hope you enjoyed this. And if you are planning on buying this telescope, so far, just with the quick view through the moon, I really love it. Uh, this is mainly just an unboxing and building it uh, video, and I'm gonna show you the moon. I'll have another video later on, probably in a couple weeks, where I discuss how much I like this telescope or how much I don't. Currently, I really like it though, so it's probably just gonna go from there. Anyway, I'll have the uh, 
phone attached to the eyepiece here soon so you can have a view. A lot more clouds than we had earlier. I don't know if I'm going to uh, be able to get any good views here. But what do you expect? I just got a telescope in the mail and I just put it together. So of course there's going to be clouds. That's just the way it goes. Oh, look at that. Look at that view. Look how sharp that looks. Oh, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Now the balance is off with the attachment of my camera to the telescope. So I got to hold it in place. But without the camera or my phone attached, it's pretty well balanced. I don't know, maybe I can add a little weight to the back end just to make up for it when I attach the phone. Come on clouds, give me one good view here.